Oh, hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Michael Boy. I'm here to read, remember, repeat. And we just want to let you guys know, you know, we could be doing something selfish, things for ourselves, right? But we started a charity. And this is very unselfish on our part because what we want to do is give back to the kids, the youth, the orphanage, the homeless, the people that don't have or don't have those new ideas because they're stuck in a revolving door. So what we want you guys to do is definitely reach out to us. This is the link right here. Help us save a lot. Click the link in bio. Read, remember, repeat. New day, new day, true day. Yes, it's your host with the most, Michael Mugger Boy. You are far too kind. No need for the introduction, applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are back with another episode, Outwitting the Devil, Napoleon Hill. This one is a gigantic, colossal read. I, I, I recommend it for all my people. Um, Y'all know, I, I, I wanna jump right into the book, right? Cause the Q and A is so interesting that when I go to sleep, I'll be like, damn, I gotta read that shit again tomorrow. You know what I mean? Of course I read on my own time, but at the same time for the show, I love getting in tune with it with y'all. You know what I mean? I see you watching. I see you, my nigga. Shout out to my nigga, you know what I mean? Let's go though. Shout out to my people. Stole a little excellence on this, you know what I mean? So, question. Right, page 196. But the writing of uninvited letters is a harmless way of finding pleasure through self expression, is it not? What damage does one do by the habit? Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna read a little bit from the top where we left off yesterday. What about people who volunteer their opinions by expressing them in writing? Do they also suffer by lack of self discipline? One of the worst pests on earth is the person who writes uninvited letters to people of prominence. Men in public office, moving picture stars, men who have succeeded in business or written a best-selling book, and people whose names appear often in the newspapers are continuously besieged by people who write letters expressing their opinion on all subjects. Question. But the writing of uninvited letters is a harmless way of finding pleasure through self-expression? Is it not? What damage does one do by the habit? Now we're going to step away from the Q&A, right? Take a moment to remember that writing, writing letters, letter writing was about the only way to communicate in the written form when Napoleon Hill wrote this manuscript. As you read, think about how his thoughts would apply to today's world of blogging and social media. So people got an opinion about everything on social media. You can put anything up. They're going to write about it. They're going to talk about it. They're going, you know what I mean? So that right there is... Um, just 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 a mass uh, uh it's no self-discipline behind it you know what i mean uh answer habits are contagious every habit attracts a flock of its relatives the habit of doing anything that is useless leads to the formation of other habits that are useless especially the habit of drifting but that is not all the dangers associated with the habit of indulging in uninvited expressions of opinions. The habit creates enemies and places in their hands dangerous weapons by which they may do great injury to the one who indulges in it. Thieves and confidence men and racketeers pay big prices for the names and addresses of the writers of uninvited letters. Knowing as they do, the writers of these letters become easy victims of all manner of schemes that result in the loss of their money. They refer to the writers of such letters as nuts. If you wish to know how foolish people are who write uninvited letters, read the nut column of any newspaper, the column in which the paper publishes the voluntary opinions of its readers. And you will see for yourself how the writers of such letters antagonize people and invite opposition from others. We see on social media, people will just write something randomly just cause, and that can piss somebody off, right? Uh, question. I had no idea, your majesty, that people get into so much difficulty through uninvited expression of their opinions. But now that you have brought up the subject, I do remember writing the editor of a prominent magazine, an uninvited letter of criticism, which cost me a fine position on his staff at a fat salary. Answer. That is a perfect example. The proper place to begin self-discipline is right where you stand. The way to begin is by recognizing the truth that there is nothing for good or evil throughout the mirage of universes except the power of natural law. There is no individual 
personality anywhere throughout the maraud of universes with the slightest power to influence a human being save nature and human beings themselves there is no human being now living no human being has ever lived and no human being ever will live with the right or the power to deprive another human being of the inborn privilege of free and independent thought that privilege is the only one over which any human being can have absolute control no adult human being ever loses the right to freedom of thought but most humans lose the benefits of this privilege either by neglect or because it has been taken away from them by their parents or religious instructors before the age of understanding these are self-evident truths no less important because they are being called to your attention by the devil than they would be if brought to your attention by my opposition stepping away from the q a hill distinguishes our right to have independent thoughts from our uninvited expression of those thoughts how would you apply this principle in today's world of blogging and social media social media is undefeated these days you know what i mean it's it's more negativity than positivity but that's why we got to think right social media may be created just to create more negativity right it's a lot of positive things that can happen on social media like this show but it's a lot more negative things happening on social media but what are people going to lean upon in the hour of emergency when they know not where not nor to whom to appeal let them lean upon the only dependable power available to any human being question and what is that answer themselves the power of their own thoughts the only power they can control and may rely upon the only power which cannot be perverted colored modified and falsified by their dishonest fellow human beings family we're gonna go to the source time and we will be right back let's get it somebody who's been doing business what is some of the biggest lesson that you learned thus far you understand me and handling business the right way I think the biggest lesson that I learned is doing what you need to do and being specific in your journey with your finances and not being a poster child for what people think that you should have and do. My ex-husband used to play professional basketball and when we got divorced I tried to live the way people thought I should live instead of the way I was raised to just have what you need and not necessarily what you want yeah. and that caused financial destruction for me. Mm. So in my rebuilding process I started caring more about what I need to do for me now and how I'm going to have that live on when I'm no longer here for my kids. Find out about making yourself a corporation, mm -hmm. starting family trust to protect your assets, you doing the research. Somebody who's been doing back family with outwitting the devil. Y'all know what y'all read, remember, repeat. Let's get it. Stepping away from the Q&A, it says, the only dependable power available to any human being, the power of their own thoughts, you may not be able to control other people, but you can control how you react to them and their actions. This is an easy thing to say, but much more difficult to do. We tend to want to change other people when we can truly only change ourselves and how we react to others. This was, we read the four agreements, right? And in the four agreements, it says people react off of their own dream. So if somebody's walking down the block right now and they say, hey, I don't like you, they might be having a bad day. Now you get to choose to react to it how you like. I know it seems easy to go upside their head, you know what I mean? But that's not how we gonna go about it. We kind of want to understand and have awareness that this person is ill-minded. This person has some ill thoughts in their mind. Question, all you say seems logical, but why must I come to the devil to discover such profound truths? Let's get back to the seven principles. You have already disclosed enough information to show clearly that the secret of how to break the power of hypnotic rhythm is wrapped in the seven principles. You have shown too that the most important of these principles is self-discipline. Now go ahead and describe the other five principles you have not yet mentioned and indicate what part they play in giving one self-discipline. Answer. First, let me summarize that part of my confession we have already covered. I have frankly told you that my two most 
effective devices for mastering human beings are the habit of drifting and the law of hypnotic rhythm. I have shown you that drifting is not a natural law, but a man-made habit which leads to man's sub submission to the law of hypnotic rhythm. The seven principles are the media by which man may break the hold of hypnotic rhythm and take possession again of his own mind. You see, therefore, the seven principles are the seven steps which lead victims of hypnotic rhythm out of the self-made prisons in which they are bound. The seven principles are the master key that unlocks the door to the spiritual, mental, and economic self-determination. Is that true? Answer, yes. That's the uh, that's another way of stating the truth. Chapter 11, learning from adversity. Okay, so learning from adversity, right? Question, is failure ever a benefit to man? Answer, yes indeed. Learning from adversity is the third of the seven principles, but few people know that e every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. Every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. Still, fewer people know the difference between temporary defeat and failure. If this knowledge were generally known, I would be deprived of one of my strongest weapons of control over human beings. But, question, but I understood you to say that failure is one of your greatest allies. I got the impression from your confession that failure causes people to lose ambition and quit trying. And then you take them over without opposition on their part. That is, answer, that is just the point. I take them over after they quit trying. If they knew the difference between temporary defeat and failure, they would not quit when they meet with opposition from life. If they knew that every form of defeat and all failures bring with them the seed of unborn opportunity, they would keep on fighting and win. Success usually is but one short step beyond the point where one quits fighting. Question, is that all one might learn from adversity, defeat, and failure? No, that is the least of what one might learn. I hate to tell you this, but failure often serves as a blessing in disguise because it breaks the grip of hypnotic rhythm and frees the mind for a fresh start. Family. We are on chapter 11, learning from adversity. If you've never read this book, you got through it here with me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the books. I'm getting the knowledge to you guys. Um, these are not my words, but definitely, definitely gigantic knowledge, man. This is colossal knowledge that can help you move forward in life and take you to the next level. Read, remember, repeat. Y'all already know what's going on. Y'all know where y'all at. And it's your host. Let's get it.